I was a corporate lawyer. Went to work for a big New York law firm, was doing, you know, mergers and acquisitions for three years, and I literally stumbled on incentives. You know, there wasn't anything like that out there. There was incentives and rewards in like your credit card program and your bank, but there wasn't anything um, in healthcare. Back then, not only was it not existent, it was offensive to reward people for being healthy. I mean, when we went to people, they would say, we are never going to pay people to do the things that they should be doing anyway. We really believed we were onto something. And so I went from corporate office to prestigious New York law firm to basically going to be working in this basement. It's got nothing on the wall, and it's just me and my first employee, Randy. And we stuck to it, bootstrapped it. And I started what came to be known as Incent One. And you know, Incent One became basically the first company to reward people for being healthy. We really felt like not only could we create a good business, but we actually could change the world a little bit. It was October 15, 2008, and you know, we just closed our big private equity investment. It was literally almost 10 years to the day that we started. So it should have been a day for us to celebrate, uh, and literally the world just came crashing down around us. And, and what took us you know, 10 years to build up to a multi-million dollar business was gone in 10 days. Our largest customers, Washington Mutual, Countrywide Financial, General Motors, were literally on the front page of the Wall Street Journal about not surviving. Our investors are angry, family's really concerned. Um, my brother and I are battling, you know, every day. Our credit's drying up almost instantly. All credit to everybody was gone. And then you have all of your customers. And then, as you can imagine, you know, a couple hundred employees wondering what's going on. Before, when you had a biggest challenge, you'd, you'd walk across the street and you'd try to decide whether to go left or right. And, and at this time, you'd walk across the street and you'd know if the street was going to be there. I really couldn't say to the people I cared about the most, not just my family and my brother and his family, but also employees, hey, we just have to do this and we'll be fine. I didn't have the answers at that moment. Those times at you know, two in the morning, we're just trying to figure out how to turn a dollar into 10. Were interesting. We were looking at two years to save what it took us 10 years to build, and I don't know if I can save it. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. I used to, at that time, get up at, you know, like five in the morning, go to the gym and go sweat. And it just hit me. It was up to me. I got us in this. I've got to get us out of this. And more so than anything, I realized that I had to start to look at things a different way. I had to start to change my perspective about normal problems and normal solutions. Almost like two plus two didn't have to be four. I remember walking out of the gym almost, almost like in a daze, almost like if I had walked across the street, I would get hit by a bus because I wasn't even paying attention, right? There was this idea in my mind that there's got to be a different way of thinking about these problems because the normal ways aren't going to work. And it really opened my mind and, frankly, my heart, because you were going to have to come up with ways that you never thought of before. And once that kind of, kind of clicked with me, it made me think about every single piece of the business and every single perspective, frankly, that I had, because my perspective had to change first. Once I got out of the kind of hard charging mentality of just what it was going to take from getting to point B and, and enabled me to really 
take a step back and say, you know, what didn't I know? And it gives you almost a freedom to say, I don't have all the answers, and I've got to start to look in places I hadn't looked before. How do you think about investors differently? How do you think about your people differently? How do you think about customers differently? Serious problems. And, you know, that really, in a lot of ways, re-energized me. The real aha moment for me was, it wasn't a different spreadsheet or a new advisor or another business plan. There's no shortage of those tools out there today. It was really the change in perspective that was the key. You know, there were two pretty amazing things that came from that. You know, one was we sold the company and today you're probably considered the founder of the industry that gives people, you know, rewards for healthy behavior. To have that change of perspective, have a positive result is something that, you know, I'm incredibly proud of. But the other thing that came out of it that I didn't even realize was that this change in perspective was really a way of thinking that could help a lot of other people. The universal problem was the struggle. Right? You have two businesses, two of the exact same businesses. Why does one succeed and one not succeed? It's all about how you manage the struggle. And that is really the key to helping everybody that goes through this actually be able to shift from just battling and struggling and surviving to really thriving. And that's what really led me to the Lonely Entrepreneur.